The first things you see when you walk in are the fiber etchings. The images are based on personal photos, my own and others I collected from Yemeni American friends and family. And they're photos that we took of each other when we were teenagers, just hanging out in our own spaces. At that age, there was often a feeling of being hyper-surveilled. In some diasporic communities, there can be a sense of communal obligation to protect young girls who are becoming women. But for us as teenagers, there was a fine line between protection and control. With this work, I wanted to focus on those moments when we were amongst each other and not having to worry about who might be watching. Soft powers refers to what I consider to be a kind of superpower. To put it simply, it's like code switching, but much more than that. Going back and forth between a collectivist culture at home to an outside world that encourages individualism, and you add to that layers of very different gender expectations. It's a lot for a teenager, so we adopt these nuanced and sometimes covert skills to help us navigate our different worlds. The fiber etchings are made by essentially the same process as burnout fabrics. It involves applying an acidic paste to the fabric, in this case, silk rayon velvet. It's then activated by heat, and then the rayon, which is the fluffy part of the velvet, is literally etched off. Burnout fabrics are more commonly used in clothing, and they were popular in the 90s, which is a time period I refer to a lot in my work and when most of the photos used as source material were taken. I also remember seeing burnout fabrics used in a Yemeni style of dress called a dira, which some people say should only be worn by married or engaged women. It's usually made with a sheer material and is often embellished with details like beadwork or sequins. At the end of the gallery, behind a partition wall, is an installation of a bedroom. It's the third iteration of this space, and this time it belongs to a fictional pair of sisters, Dina and Seba. I collaborated with author Renda Jarrar, who wrote the text for the girls' diaries, and along with the objects in the room, they tell a story of their lives as teenagers in the 90s, from seemingly trivial obsessions to the more complicated issues they're dealing with. There's also a landline phone that plays recorded conversations I've collected from the same women who contributed photos for the etchings. I think installation is an effective way to give perspective to another person's world. Walking into even what you know is a fictional bedroom feels immediately intimate and can build empathy and understanding for someone whose life may be very different from your own.